Good morning, Essex. Good morning. Happy Easter. Welcome to worship. We are so glad that you have joined us for worship this morning, whether you are on site or online. It is great to be with you today. My name is Dave Stambaugh, and it is an honor to welcome you to our Easter worship this morning. A special welcome if you are a guest with us for perhaps the first or second time. Uh, we have a welcome to worship book. If you would like to let us know that you were here today, you can also sign up for our e-newsletter. If you would like to leave an email, you can always get more information about our church as well on our website at essexucc.org. Just a special welcome quickly to our guest musicians and singers. A round of applause for our guest musicians who are with us. One quick correction to the bulletin. The gentleman to my left is not Phoebe Sullivan. That is Tyler Garuder, and we are glad that you are here with us this morning. Tyler, thanks so much. <clears throat> Just a few quick announcements uh, before we get started this morning. Save the date, Saturday, May 6th at 7 p.m. We will be having a uh, fundraising concert here. The Shoreline Ringers will be with us uh, for a concert. We want you to uh, be here and support them and support the ministry of our church as well. Uh, our backpack program is looking for large cans of soup, and we continue to collect uh, non-perishable items for the New Haven Pride Center Food Pantry. All of those contributions can be left uh, on the Methodist Hillside entrance uh, of our church. You will notice our uh, Methodist Hill entry has been redone recently, and we have a, a thank you board to all the folks who supported uh, that work. So thank you to everyone uh, who made that work possible. There is a traditional call and response greeting that is being said in churches all over the world this morning. And it goes like this. Christ is risen. And the response is, He is risen indeed. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> he is risen indeed. Let's try it once. We typically do it three times, okay? But we're going to try it once just to make sure we have it. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. That's so good. You guys catch on fast. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Today is Easter. Christ is risen. Let's begin our worship this morning as we sing number 233 in your black hymnal. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4. Christ the Lord is risen today. Let's rise together in body or spirit.
Peace be with you. Before you sit down, turn to those around you. Greet them with a happy Easter and the peace of Christ. You may be seated. And what I'd love for everyone to do, the choir probably knows this already, but what I'd love for all of you to do is just very quickly, um, because I don't think any of us were able to share the peace of Christ with them, just turn around and yell up to the balcony, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Welcome. Good to see you all up there. Great to see you. During our time of prayer this morning, what I'd like you to do is think about what Easter means to you. Think about the power of this day. Think about the joys that it brings you. Perhaps there are those you know who perhaps aren't joyful. Perhaps you know someone who is sick. Perhaps you know someone who is distant. For our prayers this morning, I'm going to invite you to bow your heads and close your eyes this morning and simply remember those folks in your hearts. Loving God, you have called us to hold the needs of those around us as dear to us as our own. So this morning, we remember them. On this joyous Easter morning, we remember you. And that on that very first Easter morning, through the resurrection of your son, you have destroyed the power of death and have opened to all the gates of eternal life. And by the power of your spirit at work within our hearts, you raise us from darkness and despair so that we may walk in newness of life. And through the mystery of Easter, you continue to touch our lives with your healing grace. So we ask that with your strength, wherever there is sickness or injustice, poverty, war, or greed, that we might bring faith, hope, love, joy, and peace. Help us this day and always to express our love for you with heart, soul, mind, and strength and to express our love for others in all that we think, say, and do. As we pray now together with the words Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning and happy Easter. Christ has risen. So I had the joy banners, which are my favorite, and the blooms of spring. This is wonderful. I'm sorry? I was told never to touch that mic. <laughs> the Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified and he has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. <clears throat> but go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. There ends the reading. Thank you, Jim. Jim mentioned the banners uh, that we put up this weekend, our joy banners. They've been... Uh, down during the season of Lent to just have a more subtle and subdued atmosphere uh, in the sanctuary. Um, but the flowers, uh, the joy banners um, are part of things that raise our spirits uh, during this special time. And speaking of raising our spirits, does anybody else put up Easter decorations? Who puts up Easter decorations. Does anybody put up Easter decorations? Judy, what do you typically put up? Okay. Eastery things. We all know what Eastery things are. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you guys put up some Easter decorations? Yes. What? Easter wreaths? Bunnies. Excellent reason, bunnies. Very nice. Anybody up in the choir put up Easter decorations? Anybody? Hold on one second. Hold. Go ahead. Used to have an Easter egg tree. We'd blow the yolks out of the egg and hang them on the trees. An Easter egg tree. Anybody else do an Easter egg tree? When I was growing up, that was what we would use. We would use an Easter egg tree. It was sort of just a little sticky thing, right? And you'd put ribbons uh, on the branches, and you would hang Easter eggs, kind of like that, except that looks like an outdoor version. Um, ours was indoors. Um, everybody has a different style. Everybody has a different understanding of, of those decorations. And then the question is, what do you put under the Easter egg tree, right? You, you, you've got to have baskets, and typically it's, it may not be presents, but jelly beans were always popular, right? Peeps. Everybody likes a good peep at Easter. Right? Reese's peanut butter eggs. Always a favorite. Now, this is where we separate the pros from the amateurs. Is your chocolate Easter bunny hollow or solid? That's where it comes down. My sister and I would be in tears if we ever got a hollow Easter bunny. Well, just like deciding on which decorations you want to put up or what's going to go under your Easter egg tree, one of the things preachers have to decide every Easter is which version of the Easter story are we going to read? Which one are we going to look at? Because as we discovered last week, 
remember, just like Christmas, Palm Sunday, the details and the accounts of the event are different. Remember, one version has leafy branches. One version had branches from the trees. One had one cut from the fields. Who remembers, extra credit if you remember from last week, where we get the idea of palms from? Which story, which gospel told us? Did I hear it back here? Gospel of John. The only one that actually mentions palms. Each gospel story also tells the Easter story a little differently. And one of my favorite, I know I always say this, I always say my favorite book from seminary. This one is really a favorite book. This is like a Bible nerd book, okay? This is pure Bible geek uh, literature right here. This is called a synopsis of the four gospels. And what it does is in four columns, literally lays out each gospel story and tells you how Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John uh, wrote the story. So there are some places where it's kind of the same story. There are some places where it's very different. Um, and you can learn a lot about the gospels by reading uh, a book like that. And if you are relatively familiar with the story, here are some of the difference in details that you can discover. And, and you don't need a book like this. I mean, you could stand there and flip back and forth, right, in your Bible. But if you have one of these, it makes it easier to just follow the story along. So here's just a few of the differences that you may find if you went to read uh, your Easter story and compared to different versions. If you are relatively familiar with the story, you might know that women go to the tomb first. Women are the first one to go to the tomb. But was there one woman, two women, three women, or four or more women? I got the right answer from our reading today. Three in our reading today. Well, the answer to that question depends on which version you read. Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. If you are relatively familiar with the story, you might know that there is someone at the tomb that greets the women when they arrive. But was it one man in a white robe inside the tomb? Was it two men in dazzling clothes who suddenly appeared next to the women? Was it an angel sitting on top of the stone that was rolled away whose appearance was like lightning or no one at all? The answer to that question depends on which version of the gospel you read, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. If you are relatively familiar with the story of Easter, you might know that once the disciples heard the story, from the women, some went to the tomb to see and check out the story. Or did they? Was it one man? Was it two men? Was it Peter by himself or did someone else go with him? The answer to that question, as you might imagine by now, depends on which version of the story you read. Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. How about the guards? Have you ever heard anything about guards being at the tomb? Well, that may be because you read the version that didn't have the guards. It depends which version you read. And was Jesus at the tomb or not at the tomb? If he wasn't, did he meet them on the road to Galilee or back in the upper room? The answer to that question depends on whose version you read. 
Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. These are just some of the various details. Or you might say decorations of the account of the story of Easter. But the good news is that these decorations, these details that differ from version to version don't necessarily impact the meaning or the power or the significance of the story. Because whether you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, Christ still rises. The details in each version of the story might be different. You may read one version where there's one woman, another version where there's two, another three or four. There may be a man at the tomb in one version or an angel in another. In the end, in all four gospels, Christ still rises. Our offertory this morning reminds us that even today, Christ still rises. This offertory was written during the pandemic. It was written for Zoom choirs. Do you remember those? Zoom choirs. I know you all remember those. I used to call it Brady Bunch choirs. <laughs> right? Remember those days? Social distancing. Isolation. Lockdowns. Heavy hearts with no end in sight. Each verse tells a different, so a different story that emphasizes the Easter message that Christ still rises. When fear grips our city, when death takes no pity when much is unknown, when friends are divided, when joy feels misguided, when we are alone. Could be a version of that Easter story too. We read that the disciples were afraid and frightened as they were locked in that upper room according to John's gospel. That second verse is perfect for Easter. Perfect. It's a verse that offers us comfort and hope and light. Christ still rises when we come together. When love is our tether. When hope is our song. Christ still rises when fear has retreated, when death is defeated, and joy will remain. Three years ago, we were all hunkered down, right? With heavy hearts, not sure what the future would hold, 2,000 years ago. Jesus' followers were hunkered down with heavy hearts, not sure what the future would hold. And the good news, folks, is that the message of Easter is a simple one. Because 
while the details of our lives may be different. Because each one of our lives tells a different story. In the midst of our pain, in the midst of our sorrow and suffering, whatever it is you're going through, death is defeated and Christ still rises, offering hope and new life. Weeping may endure for a night, the scriptures tell us, but joy comes in the morning because Christ still rises. When you hear the words to our offertory this morning, follow along, put yourself in the position that you were in three years ago, and then feel the newness and joy that rises in that second verse. As our choir gets in place, I'm going to remind you that it is your financial support that makes all the ministry of this church possible. There's a QR code in your bulletin if you would like to give electronically this morning. If you are watching online, that QR code will be on the screen in just a few moments. Thank you in advance for your generosity. As our ushers now come forward, we will gratefully receive our morning offering. is unknown Christ still rises when friends are divided when joy feels misguided when we are alone Christ still rises when churches are shut
pray with me? Good and gracious God, this morning we celebrate the risen Christ, the Christ who rises each day in our hearts, offering the promise of hope and new life. May these gifts help us to share the good news of Easter each and every day. Amen. Thanks, Rick. You may be seated. Oh, no, don't be seated yet. We got a closing hymn. We are going to sing together number 245 in your black hymnal, The Day of Resurrection. you may be seated. We're going to close our Easter service a little differently than we normally do um, with a closing postlude anthem of sorts. Our choir is going to come out uh, and get in place. I hope you will stick around for a quick uh, cup of coffee and cookie before you head off to brunch. Don't let it ruin your appetite. Join us in the parlor if you'd like to say hello and greet some, uh, greet some friends. Remember Christ still rises and our hope springs eternal.
Big thank you to our musicians, our choir, and to Sherry for wonderful Easter music. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much. Happy Easter. Go in peace.